is a lot of money. Oh my gosh. Hey you guys, welcome back to my channel. I am very excited about today's video. For today's video, we are doing a full face of my most expensive makeup products. I have seen this video popping up from other creators here on YouTube, and one of you actually suggested that I do this during my full month of your video suggestions last month. I didn't have a chance to do it then, but we are going to be doing it today. And as much as I am not one to say, hey, look at me and all this fancy makeup that I have, the reason I really wanna do this video is because next week, we will of course be doing the opposite, a full face of my most affordable makeup products and see how it compares because as much as I do occasionally love to splurge on a higher end makeup product and the experience of using something really fancy, I enjoy saving money much more. But I hope that for today you guys are excited about this one. Special welcome to those of you that are newer to my channel. I hope that you will stick around for a while, maybe watch some of my older videos, and of course hit that subscribe button. And with that said, let's go ahead and dig into some very, very pricey makeup products. So we are going to kick things off today with the Smashbox Primerizer. I've had this primer for a while now. I am just about halfway done with it and I really need to get a move on using this thing up before it expires. I like this primer a lot. It is very much a moisturizing primer, I would say, than a pore filling or a make your makeup last longer kind of primer. But it does do a really good job of softening up your skin before you go in with foundation. It is very expensive though. This thing is 42 bucks. If you are interested in this primer, I will say this to you. Go for the trial size because this full size includes two ounces ounces for $42, but the trial size includes one ounce for $15. So you're really getting a much better value getting the trial size. I heard that little tip from Andrea here on YouTube, and I wish I would have heard that before I jumped in and bought the full size. But let's jump right into foundation. And for my most expensive foundation, that is the Makeup Forever Ultra HD foundation. Mine is in the color Y245. I love this foundation. It is one of my favorite high-end foundations, which I don't actually own a ton of high-end foundations. I own like a handful, but this is one of the few that I have actually repurchased. It is $43, and one thing I will say about Makeup Forever is their shade range is pretty awesome. They have a really good range of shades and undertones, so it's actually possible to find your perfect shade match, and I would say this is probably one of my most perfect shade matches. Has a tiny bit of yellow in it, but not too much yellow, and that's kind of a hard thing to find sometimes. I feel like those foundations that are warm have a little too much yellow for my skin sometimes. And I have a little bit of yellow in my skin naturally, but not a whole lot. Now let's jump into concealer. For my most expensive concealer, we're going with the Too Faced Born This Way Concealer. This is my most expensive concealer just for the price outright. It is $29, but I wanna just say this, and I've said this before, the value of this product, so the amount of product that you're getting for the price, is actually comparable to a lot of my favorite drugstore concealers. It does give you a lot of product, it will last you a while, so I think this is actually worth the price. And on top of that, it's just a great concealer. I have it in the shade Vanilla, which seems to be a pretty perfect shade match for me. It's not too light, so it's not going to be too brightening on my under eye, but it also matches the rest of my skin as well, so I can use this pretty much everywhere. And I'm just realizing I should have done this makeup look on a day when I was planning to go somewhere. Putting all this fancy makeup on, I feel like I should be doing something more than just sitting at home editing. I actually plan to do yard work tonight, which, I don't know, I guess might as well do yard work in my fancy makeup. Not much else to do these days, right? So you guys might know that I'm not typically a powder person, but if I am wanting my makeup to last throughout the day or if I have a long night ahead of me, okay, that never happens. When do you go out and stay out all night? Never. Never have, really, ever. Maybe in college, and even that was debatable. I was that girl that went to bed at 10.30 had to leave the party early because I was tired. If I was tired, I wanted to be in my bed. And I didn't care if people would make fun of me, which they would. So I'm gonna take this powder. This is my most expensive powder. This is the IT Cosmetics CC Airbrush Perfecting Powder Illumination. This one is in the shade Light. I think I got this during the Ulta 21 Days of Beauty sale. Not the last one, but the one before that. It is a pretty good little powder. I haven't really gathered my thoughts on it very much though because in the middle of winter, this powder is a little bit too dark for me. It works great for me in the summertime, but in the summer I just am not one to use a lot of powder on my face. So I'm just going to take a little bit of this down the center of my face, kind of in my T-zone. It does look really pretty. I just need to use it more. Now that it matches me, I need to use this and figure out if I really like it, because honestly at this point I don't really know what my thoughts are on this product. Let's move into bronzer. This is the Marc Jacobs Omega Bronzer in the color Tantastic. This is a really nice bronzer but it was very, very expensive. This thing comes in at a whopping $49. I did get it, I think, during one of the Sephora 
VIB sale, so I got like 20% off of it, but it was still really pricey. I think that my thoughts on this bronzer were that it's so large, there's so much product inside it, it might actually be worth it, but really, if you really sit down and do the calculations, it's still really expensive. I know a lot of people really, really love this bronzer, and I really like it, but I think because it was so expensive, and I don't know that I like it significantly more than some of my favorite drugstore bronzers, I just am not sure that I think it was worth the hype or worth the price for me. And it's so interesting to me that there are certain products that are expensive that I think are worth the price. And sometimes I can't even figure out why I let some products get away with the price tag and why I don't let others get away with it. That is really pretty though. I have it, I need to use it more. I'd love to know your thoughts on this bronzer. If you have tried it, do you love it? Or do you think it was a waste of money? Moving on to blush, and for blush we have what is, I think, the second most expensive product that I have here today, and that is the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Ghost Palette. We're gonna use the blush in here today. I really love the blushes inside here. I absolutely love the bronzer inside here as well. I like the highlight a lot. It is quite pink toned, but my thoughts are still kind of inconclusive on these powders right here. I know so many people, and a lot of you guys as well, absolutely swear by their finishing powders. I just... I don't know, I don't see a huge difference when I use these. And I have a hard time deciding if that's maybe the idea. The idea is that you're not supposed to see these powders on the skin. They're supposed to set your makeup in place, help it look nice and glowy without being detectable to the eye. So maybe that's where kind of I struggle to see what they are really doing. This palette specifically has for, the shade right here is their dim light finishing powder and their diffused light finishing powder. So if you guys have these powders, let me know how you use them. I need to keep trying them. I don't dislike them, I just don't know that they do a lot for me but I will say this hourglasses blushes they are freaking expensive like ridiculously expensive but they're really really pretty I can't deny that they are beautiful so we are going to use them today and I'm going to take a mix of these two right here they are very pink though if you don't like pink blush I probably would not get this specific palette because both of the blushes are very very pink but they're a really healthy natural looking pink I would say if you have medium to fair skin for your medium to deep skin girls out there, does Hourglass even make a palette that is for medium to deep skin tones? I think a lot of people have complained that they don't. Did I mention the price on this thing? There's probably a reason I didn't. I didn't want to say it out loud. This thing is $80. Moving on to highlighter. Now I obviously could use this palette for really for all three, bronzer, blush, and highlight. My limitation today was that I had to use a different product for each category. So for highlighter today, we're gonna actually kind of cheat and use two different highlighters because I wanted to use this product in this video, but I didn't quite know where to put it because this is kind of one of those multi-purpose products. It is the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter. I have mine in the shade number two. This thing is $44 and it's kind of a multi-purpose product. Some people use it as a primer. Some people use it as a highlight. Some people use it as a very, very sheer coverage all over the face, make me look like a glowing goddess kind of product. I don't use it either of those ways. I like to use this basically as a liquid highlight, sometimes on its own, but I do like to top this with a powder highlight if I really want to be extra glowy. So that's what we're going to do today. I love this product. This is one of the few that I think, even though it is ridiculously expensive, I can't deny that it's a beautiful beautiful formula. If you ever have a chance to go into a Sephora and swatch this stuff, you will just feel and see how completely creamy and emollient it is. So I took a little swipe on the back of my hand. I'm going to tap that onto my finger and we're going to tap this right on top of my cheekbone here. If you guys have this product in your collection or if you've ever tried it, let me know how you like to use it. I just feel like it's too beautiful of a product to wear underneath foundation because I don't want to cover up all this beautiful glowiness. I feel like that's kind of a waste, you know? And I will also say this, I have tried a couple of drugstore products that are supposed to mimic or dupe this, and I just don't think any of them quite hit the mark. They're not quite as beautiful of a formulation as this thing is. This stuff just feels so creamy, and it does have more of a just like sheer pearly finish. I don't know. I think it's a pretty unique product actually. Super pricey. Yes, but very, very beautiful. Now that is perfectly fine for an everyday highlight for me, but because I want to use something a little extra and because I have it, we're going to use the Natasha Denona Super Glow. I have it in the shade number two. This highlighter is very pricey, $38. I really like this thing, but for the price, I would say save your money and go for some really good drugstore options. Not that they're perfect dupes or exactly the same, but you can find so many good drugstore highlights that I just don't think you need to spend $40 on a highlighter. If you are really into packaging though, the packaging of this thing is really, really beautiful. 
that is some serious, serious glow. Next up, let's move into the eyes. We're gonna start off with a little bit of primer. I have the Urban Decay Primer Potion here. This one I think is like a deluxe travel size. The full size of this primer is $24. And I, it's a good primer, but I don't think it's worth it. You can find really good primers at the drugstore. I love my Wet n Wild one. It's very comparable to this one. This one feels not quite as thick coming out of the tube as the Wet n Wild one. That one just feels a little bit more thick. The texture is a little bit thicker, but as far as what they do, holding shadows in place, they work exactly the same, in my opinion. So for my eyeshadow palette, you guys can probably guess, I know I just talked about this palette, but it is by far my most expensive palette. This is the Natasha Denona Safari palette. I did get this palette on sale, but even on sale, this is my most expensive palette in my collection. At full price, this retails for $129, which is absolute madness. But I do love this palette. I love the color story. And today I wanted to create something very kind of orangey and warm, very summery, because we also have another little topper that we're gonna be using as well. So I wanna start off by going into this orange color right here. This is the color Desert Date. And I'm taking this just right into my socket and slightly above with the rougher number 16 brush. Now I'm gonna take that same color on my Juvia's Place Small Buffer Brush we're just gonna lightly run that under the outer half of the lower lash line. Now we're gonna take my Wayne Goss number 18 brush and we're gonna go into this warm brown right here. We're gonna start building this up on this outer corner. So I want this look to be very like chocolatey. Now we're gonna take that same brown on this refer number two brush which is basically like the Juvia's Place brush. It's just a little bit smaller. I'm just running that right up against the lash line halfway across. All right, let's go even a little bit deeper. I'm gonna take that same brush and we're gonna go into this color right here, which is the darker of the two browns. This is the color Shea, and we're gonna really just smudge that right against this lash line, both the top and the bottom. Do you see how I'm kind of just pressing that into kind of just right into the lashes and pulling it slightly up. I just want a lot of depth right here. And I thought it might be kind of fun to add just a pop of green to this outer corner. I hope this doesn't ruin the look. I actually am really happy with how this look is looking right now, but I thought it'd be fun to try something a little bit different. So I'm gonna take that same Wayne Goss brush. I wiped it off just a little bit. We're gonna dip into this corner khaki green shade, the shade Savannah. And I'm going to lightly place this in this outer corner kind of where I put that first brown shade just to pull a little bit of like a green deep shift into this outer corner while wow, that is quite deep wow that's a pretty shade it's pretty subtle I don't know that you can see the green on camera it's like a just gives it a subtle cool shift right in this corner right here hopefully you guys can see that it's pretty intense though if you are not into that dark, 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 rich outer corner, you could definitely skip this step and just go with the browns. Now I'm just going back into my refer number 16 brush, the one that we use the transition shade with, and I'm just, with nothing left on the brush, I'm just kind of buffing over this top edge to make sure everything's nice and blended. Now for my lid, I'm gonna take the Hourglass Scattered Light Shadow. This one is in the color Foil, which is just a really, nice bronzy gold. Now the one that I have here came in a holiday set, so this one is a little bit smaller than their full size ones, but their full size ones are $29 a piece. And as much as I do really like these, I don't know that they're worth $29 a piece. I don't actually use this type of a product very often, and I know that some people do. If you're not much of a palette person, you would probably get a lot more use out of a product like this than I personally do. And I also feel like as much as I like this color, it's very, very warm like it's a very warm yellowy gold and I like my golds a little bit more on kind of the neutral side but it is a really pretty shadow very expensive though but I will also say this if I had a different shade I might feel differently about them because this is not an everyday shade for me just a little bit too warm for a shade that I'd reach for on a daily basis all right so the eyes are just about finished we're gonna add a little bit of liner I almost grabbed my wet and wild liner because it is just second nature to me but no today we are using the urban decay 24 7 liner in the shade perversion this is their dark black I don't actually love these as much as I think a lot of people do they're just a little bit too emollient for me like they are intense. They're so soft that I have to sharpen it almost between eyes because it wears down so much and I'm even very light-handed with it. 
I know a lot of people, these are like their go-tos for liner. I just, again, this thing is $22. Going from a $1 liner to a $22 liner, that's an awfully big jump. I mean, this thing would have to basically do my laundry for me to love it. Now for mascara, we're going to take my It Cosmetics Superhero Mascara. It was between this and the Perversion Mascara by Urban Decay, but I like this one better. It is $25. It is one of my favorite high-end mascaras. One thing I think this mascara has going for it is how quickly it goes on. You do not need multiple coats of this. You basically need one solid coat. It gets you to a very dramatic place very, very quickly. And it does last on me pretty well. It's not too difficult to remove. So it really does check all my boxes that I love in a good mascara. Other than it's just a little bit pricey. All right, let's move into the brows. For my brow product, I have the It Cosmetics Universal Brow Definer. It is technically one shade that is supposed to work for all. Let me know if you have tried this and if you think that is actually true. This is actually a bonus trial size. I think I got this free with a purchase. I was gonna include the Marc Jacobs Brow Wow, but that product has been discontinued now. And those are really the only two high-end brow products that I own. I don't go high-end very often for brow products, as you guys might know if you watch my other videos. I do like this brow pencil. It's not very precise. It's one of those larger rectangular kind of pinched shapes. They work fast, but they're not super precise. And I can see how it would work for a lot of different people. It's not too light or too dark, so I feel like there's a lot of people that could use this color, but I don't know about universal. It is also a touch dark for me, as is the next brow product that we're gonna be using, the Benefit Gimme Brow. I have it in the shade number three, which I think is like light brown. So we're gonna throw a little bit of this in. I think I might like it a little bit more if I got the right shade. I just think this shade is a little bit too dark for me. All right, we are down to lips. So we're gonna start off with some lip liner. I have Mac Whirl right here. Lip liner, again, is one of those products I don't own a lot of high-end lip liners. I am very tempted by the Charlotte Tilbury lip liners because so many people say they are absolutely budge proof. And the older I get and the more I feel like I need a little bit of help with my lips because my lips, not necessarily that I need them overdrawn or dramatic or anything, but I notice as my lips get dry and I'm older, they look very colorless and dead. So when I don't have lip product on and because I don't like to wear liquid lipsticks very often, when my lip gloss or lipstick wears off, my lips look pretty bad. So I think I could benefit from a good long wearing lip liner. Now for lipstick, I wanted to include the NARS Velvet Lip Glide, but these are also being discontinued. All of the colors that I have now are no longer available. But instead, we're going to go in with a classic MAC lipstick. So I'm going to take Max Jubilee because this one's a little bit more of like a warm. This one is a luster. It's kind of a sheer peachy brown color. They were some of the first high-end products I got from MAC. I think I got a lipstick and satin taupe and I just felt like the fanciest person in the world back in 2010. Now for lip gloss, I do have the Marc Jacobs Enamored Lip Gloss in the shade Uproar. These, I suspect, are also being discontinued. You can still find this shade on Marc Jacobs' website, and they are on sale right now, so that is a bonus. But full price, these are $29. But now that I've found the Fenty Glosses, I'm not sure I'd ever pick these over the Fenty Gloss. All right, guys, this is the finished makeup look. I do want to lock everything in place with a bit of setting spray. And for my most expensive setting spray, believe it or not, it is Drugstore. The L'Oreal Shake and Glow. I do love this setting spray. I talk about it often here on my channel, the fact that I love it, but it's annoyingly expensive. This thing is $14.99, which actually makes it more expensive than my travel size of the Urban Decay All Nighter Setting Spray. So we're going to use a little bit of this today, and then I will be right back with you to share my final thoughts. So here we are with the finished makeup look. This is a full face of my most expensive makeup and I hope it looks awfully nice because the grand total which I just calculated is making me quite sick to my stomach. I'll go ahead and come out with it. $694 what? is how much all this makeup would have cost had I bought it at full price which most of it I did not buy at full price but even if I calculated up the discounts that I saved I still think I'd feel pretty sick to my stomach. So there it is. I hope that this was interesting for you guys. It was very eye-opening for me. Honestly I consider myself to be pretty selective in the high-end makeup that I purchased but I'm wondering I'm kind of rethinking that now. Like, how did I get $694 worth of makeup in my collection in the first place? But I will just say this I am all the more excited to do the affordable version of this and compare because I have a hard time believing that this makeup look could look that much better than the affordable one. But it'll be fun to compare and of course compare the price difference. But I hope that you guys enjoyed this video today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you guys are doing well. One more reminder, if you have not yet subscribed to my channel, I would love it if you would do that before you leave. And that is it for today. I will see all of you in my next video. Bye.
And I'm sorry, I feel like I chose the wrong earrings today. They're a little distracting. They're very, very shiny. And they also remind me of people that hang blank CDs in their trees, like to decorate for the holidays. Sometimes they hang them in their trees all year long. And I just realized that my necklace is actually a tree. What are the odds? Speaking of CDs, comment down below, what was the first CD you ever purchased? Mine was the Cranberries. Everybody else is doing it, so why can't we? Anyone remember that CD? The black cover with them sitting on the couch? I was a big Cranberries fan back in high school. Still am, actually. I just, my kids murder me anytime I try to listen to the Cranberries. Who, how did I get here? Who am I?